Hello and welcome to Magical Marker, a game of Dungeons and Dragons and Drawings. We're a bunch of cartoonists and illustrators who won't just be playing the game, but doodling what happens along the way. Let's introduce our cast. Please introduce yourself, your character's name, your age, and your class. Let's start with Matt. Ah, me this time. Hi, uh, my name's Matt. I'll be playing Swell. He's a 15-year-old uh, Water Ganassi cleric. Um, yeah, uh, let's throw it over to Caitlin. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm playing Zip. She is a drow fighter and she is 16 years old. And uh, I'll pass it on to Boya. Uh, I'm playing a character named Bug. He's a warlock bugbear and he's 12 years old. And okay, Priscilla. I am playing Ispuriel, who is a half elf bard of 17 years of age. And uh, this is Belle who is 14 years of age. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I'm your dungeon mancer, Brian McLaughlin, and I'm currently running this party's NPC companion, Sutran, a magically animated severed hand of a spellcaster from decades ago, who is searching for her other hand so she can magic herself back a body. Our apprentice adventurers have been teleported to the other side of the planet, stranded in a jungle, wondering whether their masters are still alive after a titanic attack on the castle they were visiting. They escaped from the tomb of a dead king, dealt with some very wild life, and found refuge in a town of Thornwall. The priest of the nature god, Lundariel, prayed for a vision for the group of where the would-be heroes could find answers about where, where their masters were. She saw a flaming bird with tentacles and crystals, peering eyes, and the ghosts of tabaxi warriors. These ghosts are known to the, be the guardians of a nearby town called Phantom Wall. After getting some much needed rest, the adolescents left town, but there was an argument about which way to go, whether towards Phantom Wall or towards the sea to find a ship home. They all agreed to follow the priest's vision and travel west across the rainforest. It is humid, sticky, and the bugs are biting. And so now I ask you as a group, how fast are you traveling? Are you traveling regular speed? Are you traveling faster or slower? If you travel faster, you might not have to spend the evening out in the forest if you travel but you'll be easier to surprise should something be out there trying to catch you you know perhaps another uh, flame tongue flower that burned you last time is it uh, if you go slowly you may have to spend more time out here and may encounter more things but you're more likely to avoid the things you actually come across to avoid the flowers or the creatures or the things that are here or you can just travel at normal pace and your checks will neither be at advantage or disadvantage. But we won't make it there by, by nightfall. You're not sure because the Minotaur said that it would be about a day to day and a half travel. And the Minotaurs are like about seven to eight feet tall. Right. So mm -hmm. what Minotaur speed is? Was she oh. adjusting for your height? Was she not? You don't really know. <laughs> uh, are we all at good health level? Mm -hmm. um, yes, in Dungeons and Dragons, after you have a full night's rest, you get all of it, or eight hours rest, you get oh, I see. your hit points back. Oh, let's, I vote for fast speed. <laughs> yeah, I think so we, we should go faster. as fast as we can. Because yeah. this is a detour. Really. Yeah, but Zip wants to get bombed. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be right in front, like whacking through the jungle with my axe and. Uh, muttering obscenities <laughs> under my breath. <laughs> is there a, it's probably less fun at that, probably, because uh, it means less time in the jungle. So, yeah. Is there a, is there a well-beaten path from the Minotaur village out to the taxi? There, there, there is not what I would call a well-beaten path, but there is a path that leads west, and uh, <clears throat> for a while, you're able to follow this you know, somewhat traveled path. Um, what is going to be your marching order for this? Who's going in front? Who's going in the middle? Who's going in the back? I'll go up front. S sounds like Zip's up front already. Swell, already swell, we'll go at the back. Okay. okay. I can um, be behind Zip. Okay, I'll go third. All right. Uh, so that means I want Zip to make a perception check at disadvantage. This is going to work out well. 
<laughs> Perception. Disadvantage. Oh, that is a critical fail. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. I'm so busy, I'm like, prophet. just like <laughs> muttering, like, oh, what am I going to ask the tabaxi? Why nobody likes me? Oh, what am I going to ask the tabaxi? Why I'm so stupid? <laughs> uh, so you don't notice. Uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> there is a blue fruit that comes splashing onto you and just sort of like starts soaking you and the rest of you are also being attacked by blue fruit. Uh, so tell me what your armor classes are, the rest of you. Blue fruit. Okay. <coughs> I'm 13. Bug is 13. 14. 16. All right. So uh, there are these monkeys or apes. You don't get a real good glimpse to see whether they have tails or not. They're hopping around in the trees, sort of hiding around, and they're just whipping these blue fruits at you. And Isboreal and uh, uh, Bug are able to sort of dodge out of the way. Uh, but Swell is kind of like, oh, what's going on up there? Poof! And gets like one like right on the head, and it's just like dripping all down Swell's face. So the Wait, two, two I got blue the highest characters. AC. The bl blue characters are getting blue <laughs> uh, fruit all over them. Okay. And then are the these monkeys... monkeys familiar to me? Have I seen them before? You can do a, a nature or survive. Uh, Survival or nature check, I guess. Okay, I'll do survival. Wait, you oh, said Swell oh. got hit because he's a blue character? Well, no, I was just saying it's, oh. it's uh, of the dice rolling I did. Oh. I managed to hit the two oh, okay. blue people. Uh, I gotta find it doesn't it. show up as much. It's not like if you got like a tomato on the Yeah, I see. It's exact skin color, like same <laughs> shade of blue. Well, no, because they're both different shades of blue. Oh, okay. I'm more of an aqua. <laughs> I got a five on that su survival check. Yeah, you you don't know these uh, primates. All right, is it burning or anything, or is it? Uh... It is not burning, but it's 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 quite stinky. Thank you. It's what yeah. else is like. Ha! <laughs> I'm take my kind shield, of... shield out, and it's... just try and deflect it's some overly ripe, uh, like fermented. Like you, you smell like you've had alcohol or something. Like you would have wow. smelled this maybe on Titus's breath or <laughs> after he'd been in the tavern. Like yeah. it, it has that sort of strong odor to it. I'm going to like get a whole bunch of it off my shoulder on my hand and wipe it on his burial's hair while he's laughing at me. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to stand still for that. Roll the hit. <laughs> you do not have proficiency, but you are allowed to add your uh, your strength modifier. Okay. <laughs> oh, 21. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can I do like a deck save? Uh, no, because she did the roll to hit. So either you have to roll to miss, or, or you, you roll to get out of the way, or she rolls to hit. So I gave her the roll to hit. So that's a, mm. that is going to be a hit. So you've got <laughs> uh, blue goo hair. <laughs> there is a, oh, what are you laughing you? at? Hey, you're the one who <laughs> wanted to go through the desert. Now you got to get dirty. <laughs> You're oh, so sorry, dumb, not the desert, the jungle. <laughs> you're so dumb, you can't even figure out what terrain you're in. <laughs> I am definitely going to viciously mock her for that. Oh, roll to sa uh, roll a saving throw there. What's the save again? Uh, wisdom, 14. Oh, I do a wisdom save? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I got 15. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be viciously mocked by somebody who's got blue goop so, in their hair. <laughs> it is very hard. <laughs> I'm just um, gonna like smirk at you. The monkeys are laughing, but and then they recede uh, further into the jungle. You hear the laughter going further away from you. <laughs> right. Oh. Well, I'm not. I'm not too worried about these monkeys since they're not really attacking us. They're just, they're just being jerks. Pull right. out a comb and start cleaning my hair and handkerchief and start cleaning my hair off. I'll, um, 
I'll, I'll create some water and um, mm -hmm. use it to clean off the the gunk and mm. keep on walking. All right. I'll grab some of that water too. Yeah. Go for it. You're more, more than welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're able to remove a lot of the, you know, the seeds and the pulp and the skin, but uh, the smell doesn't seem to, I mean, it's not as strong as it was, but it, it it's still kind of stinky, but because it both looks and smells pretty bad still. Also, because uh, she has the green paste on her leg and uh, yeah, so now she's got a couple of gooey things on <laughs> her skin. It's, uh, yeah. She's leading you onwards. And, you know, uh, let's see. At least the wind isn't blowing her smell back at you. That's, that's blowing good. sideways. <laughs> uh, so you travel for a while through the jungle, and the path uh, starts to head north. And there's like a jungle trail that would keep heading west, uh, but it's much less used. That's where you're really going to have to start uh, bushwhacking and cutting down vines occasionally and things like that. Um, so if you start, if you want to continue heading west, this is where you start hacking your way, and you're going quickly through this as quick as you can through this. It was pretty easy to go fast through the, uh, the path. But a couple hours later, the path is gone, and you're going to have to start traveling through the, the trees. So where does the other trail lead, sorry? North. Oh, which is where I wanted to go. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to just reiterate the wisdom of not going to the Tabaxi City and instead going north, <laughs> where the boats are and where we don't have to crash through, you know, uh -huh. jungle for days and days and days to ask some ghosts a dumb question. Are you, uh, uh, it sounds like you're not doing anything to be quiet as you're traveling, that there's grumbling and hacking and stuff. So I shouldn't ask you guys for a stealth check, right? Nope. No. Okay. Also, I think going stealthy is the slow route, isn't it? So. Yeah. So uh, now I need a perception check from, uh, we'll just, uh, a disadvantage everybody do a perception check oh everyone okay so is disadvantage you roll two and you take the lower one that's correct uh, six <clears throat> six for me as well eleven wait hold on uh i got a five five all right so none of you notice this uh you're cutting through cutting through and then you see, like, crouch down in front of you, this rather large creature as you, like, you know, get some uh, shrubbery out of the way, and it's just right in front of you, about 10 feet away. <clears throat> a Chimera, a combination of three creatures. It has got the forebody of a gorilla, the back tail, uh, back part of a jaguar, the wings of a rainbow-colored parrot, and then one head for each of the creature. And it just looks at you and goes <sighs> with its gorilla head and it's growling from the jaguar head and like oh, <laughs> from the parrot head. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll like put my arms out to stop the other guys and be like, whoa, 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 back up, back up. And I'm gonna try and um, m just like back away from it without like angering it too much. <laughs> Maybe like say some soothing words like, Whoa, it's okay. We're not here to hurt you. Okay, I stop. Uh, what... I look at it. I turn tail. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of check would you like to do to do that? Have something like animal handling or survival or persuasion? Like, what sort of. What um, do you think is appropriate here? I could try survival. I feel like that's like my number one skill in the jungle because I've probably come across like dangerous jungle animals before okay let's give survival a try i got a 19. 19 all right so it doesn't make uh, it slowly progresses forward towards you and it's like 
<laughs> you can smell the berries. Are we are we in a forest or what is a the rain, terrain? In a rainforest. Oh, okay. oh, I'm gonna have an idea because I think from it sniffing, it can probably smell the berry stink. And I will like without kind of like looking away from it, I'm gonna be like, Boxy, Boxy, did you grab any of that fruit that the that the uh monkeys were throwing? Um what do you think, Bug? Do you think he would have done that? Does he like to collect stinky fruit? Uh no. But <laughs> <laughs> he did he does have the fruit from the Centaur village. I guess that'll do. <laughs> and I'm gonna like I'm gonna like like wave at him to to maybe give me some of the fruit. Maybe I can make an offering to this thing. Mm. All right. Yeah. Boxy la launches the fruit into your hand, I guess. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna like maybe put the fruit down and then like step back um with my with my hand still up to show that I'm like not a threat. All right, let's have a persuasion check then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> All right. So you leave the fruit there, and it goes forward, and it picks it up, throws it aside, and it gets up <laughs> closer and closer to you. Its face is like right up against you, and it's smelling you, and it licks the oh. blue goo from you. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna stand there and let it do that for a little while and see what happens. <laughs> From somewhere right. behind the leaves, is Boreal can't help himself and he's like, "Ha!" <laughs> Wait, so do all three of you have the blue stuff on you? Yeah. But two of like, them have washed it off a little bit. Just... Like it's it's uh, not as like they smell like it, but they don't have that. Oh, okay. Like your uh, Zip's character really smells like it, whereas the. Uh, other characters have an odor of it, but it's not, you know, but they don't reek of it in quite the same way. Uh, so this creature uh, starts licking away and eating and starts adjusting you, like turning your head that way so it can <laughs> oh. get like a, a better uh, taste of the fermented blue uh, jungle fruit. And uh, I'd like you to make a, uh, I guess, it, probably wisdom, wisdom saving throw to see whether you can withstand this moment <laughs> without freaking out, without frightening it. Oh, a six? A six. All right. Uh, so you start to like, you know, freak out a little bit, and it uh, reacts poorly and uh, bites you for nine points of damage. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then it goes back to trying to eat more. It's, like, got your arm now, and it's getting into, like, you know, the, the tickly crevices and stuff. <laughs> Am I, like, laughing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless what? you don't want to be. If you want to tell me, like, no, my character doesn't laugh at that. Uh, no, she, she's probably really ticklish. Right. Wait, where did uh, the monster bite her? Uh, around here. Okay, on the shoulder. On the shoulder. Yeah. And uh, eventually, it's eaten as much as it can get off of you. It's like it moved down to your leg and was eating off of your knee and stuff, and it got to the green goo, and it, was, uh, 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 and it pushes you and shoves you, and you fall into the bushes. And then it comes towards East Boreal. Uh, oh, I, I mean... I thought East Boreal ran bit. away. Yeah. Uh, how far did you... Like, I thought like you were backing up slowly. You actually ran? No, I just ran, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, you startle it as you <laughs> ran away. Uh, and it gets aggressive. Uh, so it's starting to chase after you, is Boreal. Uh, um, I, 
Well, I would have as I was running. I guess it depends on how fast it is. And if I had the chance, um, tried to duck to the side and then cast a minor illusion uh, to be a stone. Okay. Do Not you that I know if it would actually have all that much uh, effect because it can smell, but. I was gonna say is I don't think minor illusion does smell. No, it doesn't. So uh, yeah, it's tracking you by smell and it's like gets up close to you like where you were uh, you know, you've run to, and it moves a little bit faster than you. Mm. Um, so it's catching up to you, and it's going to knock you to the ground. It's what it's trying to do this round. So I'm going to roll the hit. And that is a... It's not a great hit. It's only 13. Uh, my AC is 14. Oh. All right. So it tries to push you to the ground with its gorilla paw, and you sidestep it. Also, it would have, I mean, if it can't see me at this point, if it can smell me. Oh. OK. Um, I don't know how that squares with, in terms of like visibility versus invisibility or not seeing an advantage versus. It doesn't matter at this point, because it didn't hit me anyway. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I. So it would, it would be making an attack with disadvantage then. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it doesn't really matter at this point because it yeah. missed anyway. But um, uh, I end up falling as I dodge. I end up falling out of the rock that it had that okay. I had tried to put up, and uh, I'm going to say, "Oh, just fall off," and cast sleep. Okay. Uh, Caitlin's go to for her bard as well. I, I think it's study. Would you yell at it or would you say something like a more like a lullaby to it? Uh, it's a very aggressive lullaby. Okay. <laughs> go the F to sleep. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Twenty three. Twenty three. It does not go to sleep. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. What was it doing next? I mean, that was my action, so. It leans over with its uh, gorilla head and sniffs at you and looks and is sort of inspecting you. Uh, and then it goes, <clears throat> and just turns around and starts to walk away from you. <laughs> I'll stand up and go, yeah, <laughs> you walk away. <laughs> I'm the king of the jungle here. It turns around. I mean, uh, it shrieks. I it, it shrieks at you with the parrot head. That's a very loud. <laughs> I do a minor illusion shriek back. Uh, okay. uh, it's a roar, but it's actually not coming. Gonna have it come from me. I'm actually gonna send it off um, thirty feet, kind of orthogonal. Uh, and so that's somewhere behind a clump of bushes that's not visible. Like a... So it's like looking around yeah. and it goes off in that direction and it's exploring in that direction. What are the rest of you doing at that moment? I'm, I'm getting ready to fight it in case it does, it turns violent. I'm just... Uh, but are, are you, where are you compared to the rest of the group? Are you still up with uh, Zip and... Or have you like retreated with these Boreal? Um, I think I, I started to back up a little bit when it showed up and then um, got my my uh, my uh, shield and hammer ready to to fight if necessary. Um, but when Zip was like, no, just just wait, just wait, just wait, I uh, relaxed a bit. Okay, and uh, where's Bug? Um, me and Boxy are disguising ourselves as rocks. All right. Next to where the, I guess, the zip is. <laughs> oh, there you are. I can you, see. You, you see my drawing? Yeah. Uh, I knew what you were doing. I wasn't sure where you were doing it. Okay. You're doing it okay. close to where zip was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, thing comes back and it's looking around for where zip was and it comes over. It sniffs its uh, swell. You know what? And then it turns around 
and it gets up on its hind legs, and beats its chest, and goes, Aah! and then all three heads make a noise at the same time, and then it flies off a bit into the jungle. Defeated the chimera. <laughs> that was a uh, very intense. How's your uh, zip? How's your shoulder? Bleeding profusely. <laughs> what What was your initial health point? Twelve. <laughs> well, that nearly took you out in one. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll I'll uh, say a healing word. Uh, at you and uh, heal you for four hit points, which isn't much, but better than nothing. Are your bones broken? No, are they sticking out? It's, no, okay, <laughs> it's just a flesh wound, nothing to be concerned about, you know. Wow. I'm I'm taking it very cool for somebody that nearly got eaten by a chimera, but inside I'm you're in shock. I'm in shock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're actually very gentle creatures. Chimeras, <laughs> they just uh, really like fruit. Um, I've totally dealt with them before. Nothing to be well, worried about. Bug, you have seen a, a chimera before uh, in the zoo back in your hometown. And the one you've seen uh, has different animals that uh, combine to make it. So you haven't seen this combination before. When you've seen it before, uh, it was a goat and a dragon and uh, a lion. Mm, OK. Wow, that's pretty interesting. How do, how do they get combined together? Is it like a magic thing, or is it biology? Uh, you ask people uh, about it like uh, your master and he said you're pretty sure that it's uh, they're the result of uh, scientists or well uh, wizards and ex you know surgeons sewing things together Dr. Moreau style to uh, create something weird but sometimes they reproduce with uh, other animals and create other strange hybrids hmm. if it has the Chimerical gene. Maybe it can pass it on uh, more strongly than uh, an animal who doesn't have that would do. So it can pass along, even though if it mates with a creature that doesn't have three heads, it can be the dominant gene. Mm -hmm. no, do uh, are they good for being pets? Um. Some wizards uh, would use them as guardians, uh, but I don't think a lot of them uh, would consider them pets. They tend to be more savage and wild and not tameable. I suppose if you had the combination of something like, you know, a cocker spaniel and <laughs> uh, a horse and a cat, uh, like a domestic house cat, maybe you could have one as a pet. But if you've got like a jaguar and a gorilla, okay. you have a lesser chance of succeeding it. I want to see a chimera with the body of a cocker spaniel, the head of a horse. <laughs> 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 yeah, I want to see a pet chimera. That would be cute. Would be <laughs> oh, you guys draw it right now. <laughs> we have the power to make that happen. Okay. Uh, if somebody has to draw wow. the body and the other three draw the head. <laughs> okay. Um, Heads. We've talked about doing a magical marker stream that isn't this, that is us uh, additionally just doing drawing stuff. And I, this is one of the drawing games I like to play with, like uh, when I do school visits and things like that, is I play Chimera where the audience gives you, uh, you know, three or four different animals and you've got to mix them all up. And then we see, you know, how different people drew them differently. So if we ever do that, we should totally play the Chimera game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wait, we can take a break and draw in the sand or the dirt. The sand. <laughs> <laughs> While we decompress from that, that yeah. um, <laughs> we draw a cute, we draw a cute one. That one was too scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this drawing that you're doing is now canon in the story. Yeah. Somebody draws this, or you draw it as a group. 
Is this the cat head? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the bug right. is drawing this. I'll do the body. So, is it the hind hindquarters as well are different, or are they? Usually, the hindquarters are different, and then off it often has a uh, aerial animal as part of it, and has wings. So, like a dragon or a bird, Pegasus. What would maybe a chicken, like a chicken head, <laughs> or a parrot? Yeah. Oh no, that one was a parrot, so that's not it. Um, or a bunny. But a bunny, I don't know if bunnies can to, fly. Used to have wings. Wait, what? Oh, it needs to have wings. I'll do like a rooster head. It needs to have one that can fly. Yeah. Oh, uh, they. I said they often have wings. Uh oh. Okay. So they have the front legs of one animal, the back legs of another, and then the wings of another. So oh, this is turning into more of like a pigeon, but that's okay. Maybe it's like a fancy pigeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those ones with a really big neck that goes go. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the idea that it, it's a pigeon because it's maybe like it's a carrier pigeon. Like this is the thing that delivers messages. <laughs> and then the tail is usually like snakes, isn't it? Well, if it's it, that's some of the folklore is like that in Dungeons and Dragons. Usually the tail is like the tail of a, a dragon. So it's got a dragon's head, dragon's wings, dragon's tail, a goat's back legs and lion's uh, front legs. Okay. I did back half of a chicken in the front legs of a <laughs> cocker spaniel. <laughs> so it needs to have a cocker spaniel head too. That's it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll move this one over to give us some more space. Is, is Cerberus technically a Chimera? It's just two it's, different dogs? No, it's, it's I've seen that done. Dog, but... uh, I've seen it done with three different, but I like the idea that it's like a a very, it's like this the Chimera that was made by the person that when they get three scoops of ice cream just gets three scoops of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make it cute, but I don't know how to draw a cat. It's <laughs> I said Cocker Spaniel because it's the first breed that came to mind, but I honestly don't know what a Cocker Spaniel looks like. I don't know dogs well enough. They're a medium-sized dog with long hair. And yeah, they have long, like um, the floppy ears. Yeah. All right, so who's drawing this? <laughs> I don't know. Who's drawing it? Who's drawing the Cocker Spaniel? Well. Who drew the chicken? I drew the chicken. Who drew the cat? Me. I did. Priscilla, what did you draw? Um, oh, it's Buriel still sulking in the jungle. That's oh, not... he's not drawing? Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll do the yeah. caucus bench. <laughs> he's hiding in the bush down the bottom, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is he hiding because um, his his hair got mussed up? Uh, he's hiding because, uh, as far as he knows, he nearly got eaten. <laughs> All right, so you can hear the uh, East Boyle, you hear the rest of the group are, are taking a break and they're chatting and playing around with a stick in the sand or in the mud. Mm -hmm. And eventually, at some point, I start pulling out uh, my my viol, um, my kruban, and playing. No one knows what it's like. <laughs> Be a sad bard. You guys hear East Boreal uh, emoing uh, mm -hmm. from, you know, like 120 feet away, something like that. <laughs> Maybe only 60 feet, 60 feet away or so. <clears throat> um, well, I guess I'll go and talk to him. Okay. I'll go over and talk to his burial. And so I'll zip will go and, and like just sit next to the bush. 
like this. <laughs> it's a, it's an oddly musical bush. <laughs> <laughs> Although when you touch it, it doesn't actually uh, have any substance to it. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can see the eyes that you've drawn because I wonder if that might be covered by the um, the border at the bottom of the screen. Uh, oh, no, so it looks like it's edges. just barely there. Okay. I can move it up a bit too. Oh, I'm not actually on the. Oh, I don't think I actually have that layer anymore. I had to reload, so. Huh. Uh, nope, I got it now. And zip will say. There we go. <clears throat> I was pretty scared back back there. You know, I really thought that I was going to get eaten by that by that monster. <laughs> you know, anyone with like an ounce of sense would have just run away immediately. <laughs> I, like, couldn't even think. Yeah. Why are you trying to connect with me? What are you talking about? I'm just saying that, you know, crashing through the jungle is not an easy task. You know, there are going to be things in here that are scary and that are going to try and eat you. Well, maybe we should have gone a little bit slower then. You want to go slower? Like a... We can go slower. That just means we're going to be in here longer. <sighs> and then an A. Well, I suppose out here longer is better than faster eaten. I guess so. Kind of amazing that it only seemed to want the, uh, the, that food, though. I don't I mean, know what's so good about it. It smells. Yeah. It probably, like, doesn't, you know, come across people very often, so it pr didn't really know what to do with us. But it probably just eats the, that fruit all the time. Like, maybe it doesn't even eat people. You think it's not a, a carnivore? I don't know. I don't know either. This is very different from anything I've ever been in. <laughs> well, anyway, it's gone now, and... And Zip's gonna, like, take a real pause there and say, I thought it was really cool that you tried to magic it. It failed. Yeah, but... I couldn't do anything. None of us could do anything. I wouldn't even have tried. Exactly. Because it's... <sighs> There's a lot more out here that I don't think any of us have come up against. Why did they send us here? Like, what could this have possibly... What good could this have possibly done? Well, I guess now you know what to do if you come across a chimera. Throw some sticky foot somewhere far, far away. <laughs> yeah, run away as fast as you can. <laughs> Maybe I should have tried to climb a tree. I... Didn't that have wings, though? Yeah, but were those wings really big? Do you think you could let really fly with those? Don't know. Do you want to keep going? Hmm. Well, I don't want to keep sitting around and spend more time out here when necessary. And the the bush just kind of vanishes <laughs> and stops playing this sad violin <laughs> song. Uh, and puts it away and um, just sends up. He's like his butt is all dirty because he tripped and fell on the ground and is rolling around and it's just not, you know, totally <laughs> all there. But he he's apparently spent some of that time sulking. Uh, <laughs> summoning um his servant because you see like this little his pack just starting to float and like there's a brush going through his hair <laughs> and putting it back in order <laughs> what about the others they're fine 
Well, you see us drawing in the in the dirt mm -hmm. together. I don't <laughs> think they even know how much danger we're in. <laughs> Lucky. I don't know. I think Soto was the first one to think that perhaps elementals are dead. Well, they're not dead. So he's just overreacting. He just kind of looks at you and then shakes his head a little bit and uh, <laughs> goes back toward the to the others. Sutrain <laughs> yeah. so got bored and started drawing with the stick too and added a, made the dog into a pirate dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you guys want to get back at bushwhacking? Do you guys need some more time? What um, what time of the day is it now? Um, it was a couple of hours before the trail ended, and then it's going to be uh, another probably hour and a half that you were traveling before you met the Chimera. So uh, I'd say... Yeah, it's not even noon yet. The sun is like, yeah, it's starting to get over close to being over top of your heads. It's very warm, warmer than it has been. Uh, as they start to get ready to, you know, pack up and go and finish up the the, the final points on their masterpiece on the ground, um, Israel says, so we have we tried the going fast approach perhaps and very nearly got eaten or perhaps eaten by something that at least didn't seem to want to eat us but could have if it wanted to i think we should go a little slower and more quietly mm. okay medium speed then at least it's kind of a... sorry go ahead <laughs> let's try not crash through the forest like we should go fast but like not that fast that I don't, I don't want to run into one of those things again medium speed it is and the fast no slow like that one story about uh, the, the the three dragons I think it was the three dragon bone you know, Mama Duck and Bone, Papa Duck and Bone, and Baby Duck and Bone. Mm, no. Mm. Wasn't there was uh, like a little a little elf girl that stole their food or something, right? Is that? Yes, yeah, there was a very uh, important netwood elf girl <laughs> who who came across uh, the hut in the forest. These were, you know, remote, isolated Dragon Bone, and they uh, were elves. And she came across it, and she was very hungry and saw all this food in this nice house there and thought that, oh, nobody's here. I will help myself to it. I think she was an adventurer. <laughs> and uh, so she ate the food, but the the big bowl of uh, meat and fruits was, was too sour for her. And the medium bowl of the um, of fruit and meat was too sweet. But the, the little bowl of the little bag and bone was just right. And so it was the same with their trails in the living room and their beds because she came very tired after eating their food and trying out the living room and and uh, poking into other things. So she fell asleep in the baby duck and bones um, bed because of her snooping. She was very tired after adventures and her snooping and they came back and found her and chased her away. Well, some, some versions of the story have that. Other versions of the story have them adopting her and some just have them eating her. Yeah, that's the one I've heard. She gets eaten at the end. But, you know. I've heard, I've heard a couple of different versions too. So what's the point of the fairy tale? We're going into the, the middle path. The just right. The not too fast, not too slow. Uh. <laughs> I thought that you'd gone crazy for a second there. That's also something that many people say. All right. All right. Yeah. You guys are continuing along, and uh, you guys 
uh, can make a perception check to see if you notice the next interesting thing along the way. Not at disadvantage, not at advantage, just regular. All of us? Does or... somebody else want to do it this time? <laughs> uh, all of we you all... can do it. We'll do a group check. Okay. Group check, okay. This is oh, straight okay. Fifteen. I got it. Twelve. I got four. Whoa. Twenty-one. Nice. All right. Um, so you guys are traveling along, and you hear some uh, bug and uh, East Boreal hear some noises, some sort of rustling coming from the bushes and the trees up ahead, and you, you know, put a hand on the people next to you to get them to pause, and you spot what looks like a a wave moving through the jungle that is entirely made out of beetles. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen a video of ants trying to cross water and they form that bridge where mm. they all connect. So it's like, it's just one connected thing of beetles traveling around and it's sort of meandering up ahead. How big it just is... has like a look of horror on his face. <laughs> How big is a wave? Like, is it a thick line of beetles or? Yeah, it's pro in... it's probably like the length of two people holding on to each other by the the feet. Like it's this sort of thing that's. Okay. How wide is then... it though? Like the density. Uh, like, I, again, like people like sort of like a large snake, like an anaconda or something. Okay. okay. Maybe you know a little thicker than. Like an anaconda that's eaten someone. Yeah. It's one of the points toward that and says, So you're always talking about how you miss selfing. There's a way for you. How oh, I need what's it? Oh. <laughs> about surfing. Oh, so, uh, there's uh, a way for you. Yeah. There's a way. Uh, nah. Nah. <laughs> that, that, I don't think I can ride that. That looks dangerous. Um, I think we should sure. wait till it goes, or, or like try to go around it. I've heard of bugs in the forest, like in the jungles, that can like strip flesh from bone, and that's a lot of them. Have I seen these kind of bugs before? Do I know them? Do another survival or nature check. Nineteen. Yeah, that's that's Douglas. Oh. I know uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, uh, oh, do I know these bugs? It's like, yeah, like you're, you're old friends. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know of exactly these right. bugs. They're collectively Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> are they dangerous? Yes, they're quite dangerous. Okay. And they do uh, strip flesh from bone, like Swell had uh, thought. Right. Wow. Um, I'm gonna say, maybe we should find another way around. Yeah. Are the bugs like sentient? Oh yeah, they're absolutely sentient, but they're uh, not particularly like smart. Right. But they sense things through vibrations, and their sight isn't excellent. Okay. This is very quietly and carefully a creep away from this. Yeah. I? Yes. Yeah. Let's let's try to go around it. Yeah, let's make a large radius loop. <laughs> I right. mean, it's only two people length. Um, okay. So let's have uh, stealth checks then to try and back away. I'll okay. give you advantage because uh, you guys know <clears throat> sort of what you're facing and you're backtracking. So you're uh, traveling through stuff you've already traveled through. So mm -hmm. this is just a straight roll Can for I... me then. Because I have chain mail on. Yeah, me too. Can I, I do a minor that. illusion sort of in our wake to cover up any sound <clears throat> might make? Like just bird call, sort of wind rustling in the leaves. Sure. I mean, um, that would give you extra advantage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. W with the help, with the help, uh, uh, swell, or no? Um. Yeah, sure. We'll let you, uh, because there are two circumstances that would give Swell and um, Zip 
advantage. I'm going to allow you to have actually have advantage instead of a straight ball. Uh, Is it actually in the shape of a human? I, I'm not drawing that. That's oh, okay. me. <laughs> I can't draw it here. Uh, I, got, I got a 12. It's Dave. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> hey guys. Oh man, those are. They noticed us. Um, 13. <laughs> okay, so oh. st stealth check from East Boreal was 13. Anybody and else I make also a roll got yet? 13. Yeah, Mine I got, I got 12. 13. I got a 7. Alright. You all slowly back away and. There is like a zip. You step on a twig and it snaps, but it snaps right when you hear a <laughs> And so you don't even hear the snap. You feel it under your foot. But there's that bird call that, you know, makes more noise than your snapping does. Mm -hmm. And so with uh, Isboreal's help, you are all able to slowly back away and uh, how far back do you guys want to go before you start looking for another path, or you want to hack your own path, or what do you want? How do you guys want to proceed now that you're, you feel, out of danger for the moment? Uh, I think we should go, like. Which direction was it going? You've been heading west, hmm. uh, and you've backtracked a little bit east. You could try to, uh, you know find another animal trail to follow. You could try to hack your own way through something or... Um, Can we not make a semi-circle around it? Yeah, you could like bushwhack your way through it and then try and get back to the trail. Yeah. You got a, lot, a, a few different options there. What do you guys want to do? Was it going in a specific direction? No, it was sort of just swirling around. Uh -oh. Oh, so there's multiple tra trails that we can take. There, you could uh, possibly look for another animal trail, and I would make you do a survival check to find that. Um, but it, this is the only real kind of path that you think somebody might have traversed before in any regularity. Then yeah, I guess. We, we, sh we should uh, go around it and get back to the same path maybe okay. makes sense to me yeah. yeah let's try that all right are you gonna go north or south around it mm, no does it does it look like there's any particular advantage one way or the other from where we are no i'm just gonna roll which way it's traveling okay uh um, so wait, wait, which way is the beetle traveling well it was all sort of swarming around up there but it's like sort of just Is, roaming around, right? So, so okay, wait. It's a wave like this, like a length. So it, it's like going in a circle, or what? No, it's just exploring around. Like it's just wandering around from tree to tree, and sometimes it circles back on itself. But then it, you know, travels over there, and then, oh, I see. you know, you're not sure exactly where it's traveling. It was going in a very random-looking direction. All right. Very organic path. It wasn't like. I'm walking north down this path. It's just like going every which way. I see. Okay. Let's just go north. Let's just go. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's just go north. All right. I rolled south, so you guys successfully evade. Uh, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the the bug man. <laughs> the wave of bugs. That was he's not he's like, ah, I don't know why nobody ever comes to see me. <laughs> <laughs> they always say, let's hang out, and then they never do. In my mind, it was a humanoid. <laughs> <laughs> humanoid bug man. Um, it's certainly more easier to draw that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is well past noon now it's probably about like the sun is starting to go down and your tummies are starting to rumble uh do you guys want to break and have some lunch yeah sounds yes. good are there any um edible fruit trees around that i can identify um do a survival check and we would have brought had rations they told us to pack properly right like yeah were... mm -hmm. but you know i got a no reason not to 
Sorry, what was the roll? Nine. Nine. Um, you don't see anything right around here that's particularly right. It's, you know, been plucked. You can see trees that have fruit on them that are not ripe yet, or they fall into the ground and are overripe, but nothing that's just right. Right. Probably that chimera got all the good stuff. Mm. Okay. I guess we'll just eat what we have, our st right. sandwiches in our backpack. Boxy pops open, and like you guys see a bunch of the food that was on the table at breakfast. Wow! Oh, nice a buffet style. <laughs> I have, I have Great. Leonel just set out the stuff in like a proper picnic fashion. <laughs> All right. There is no none of that uh, smoked ham, but there are lots of different fruits. Mm -hmm. And uh... um, uh, can we take a? Is this like a short rest? Can I spend hit die? If you guys would like to take a short rest, you can try for that. Do we yeah, take been... a short rest with the drawing, or that wasn't long enough? Uh, that wasn't long enough. It wasn't an hour. That was probably oh, more okay. like you know, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah, let's take let's take a short rest. This uh, we've been walking all day. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> I only got a one on my hit die. Oh. You get to add your con bonus. Oh, do I? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank God. Have what? What bonus? Your constitution bonus. So uh, if you've been injured, you can, uh, and you're taking a short rest, you can uh, regain some of your lost hit points by spending a hit die. At first level, you have one hit die. At second level, you have two hit dies. At third level, three, etc. And so you can then roll that die and regain that many hit points and you add your constitution bonus modifier to it. So if you have a plus two under constitution, you gain whatever you roll the die roll, plus two. Oh, I see. And I think everybody in the party rolls d8s. No, I roll a d10. Oh. So, so getting one a one is especially bad. <laughs> what do I roll? There must be a d8 as well. Well, on full health. Yep, clerics are d8. Um, do you guys want to role play out a moment of having your lunch under the, you know, shaded canopy of the jungle, or do you guys want to sip ahead with, uh, you know, what might be the next encounter? I wanna, I wanna ask um, East Burial what that song he was playing was, because I've never heard it before. <laughs> I actually can't remember. Wait, hang on. Nobody knows what it's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, it, well, you want to know who made it? It is, uh, well, it's an old song, uh, very famous in the Vasily Kingdoms by a belt who was very well known for his, uh, his ballads. Um, but it was called because he was very popular, but also very misunderstood. And so he, this is, which is why he composed the song of no one what is, knows what it's like to be a sad bell because, uh, you know, he always put on a show of being very um, happy and, and, you know, bringing light to other people's lives. But in reality, he was very sad inside. Hmm. I can't remember, did Isbaril have one of the music players? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. Will you sing it for us? Of course. And then perks up a little at this and brings it out and starts to play it in with uh, more gusto. What is it? What is the lyrics again? <laughs> <laughs> let's get let's get the TCMA <laughs> takedown on our videos. I think the cover co uh, comes under fair use, doesn't it? I, I would think so. <laughs> And it's only it goes, changing into no sad one bombs. knows what it's like to be the bald man, <laughs> to be the sad, sad bald <laughs> behind gold eyes. <laughs> oh. Can I record it onto <laughs> my uh, device? Do these devices allow recordings? Uh, 
yes, you. Uh, there are some that allow recording, so it's up to you. You tell me whether yours has that. Would it be like the more expensive version? If so, then probably not. Um, it'd probably be a little more expensive, but you might be able to find one that holds less music and also records. I think you probably have one that does record because um, you were in a fairly, like when you were with Titus on that island uh, that had, like you'd go visit people on, like where there was the tavern and everything, there were enough people traveling through that, you know, somebody would have passed you their old one right uh for not very much money and you would have one that can record okay I'll record. also i want to give you the opportunity to uh record sounds because i think it could be a fun character thing <laughs> i'll record it to listen to listen to later um you would have to maybe actually bring it out and she would have to see or he would have to see that you're doing that for you to get a, a good <laughs> recording totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that he's very yeah. mind. <laughs> he is very much the opposite of minding this. <laughs> Actually, let me. I want to do a performance roll to see what how good of a recording. Sure. Uh, oh, a twenty-five. Nice. Oh, twenty-five. Wow. <laughs> Get it's like a there. virtuoso performance in the middle of it. <laughs> The best performance you ever had in your whole life. Because <laughs> you're really feeling it. You'd never actually yeah. like experienced Quite it before. I understood. <laughs> yeah, the depths of emotion that uh, he must have had. But... <laughs> Do we all get like an inspiration boost from that? <laughs> if I could, oh, I don't have it yet. That's level two. If we were at level two, I could have done the thing where it heals you. If I play I'm a song, say a song of rest, rest right? right? That's... Yeah, but I don't get that yet. <laughs> Oh, well. That's okay. You get um, in character, non mechanically inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Zip, when you're doing this, you're having a memory of how you did put some new music on last night of uh, that guy named uh, Truthsayer, or Smoothsayer, sorry. Uh, the girl that, that the, snuck into our room? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But I didn't record it. I just like copied it, right? Yeah, yeah. But you've got you now have a copy of it on yours. Yeah. Pretty advanced musical device. Magic is pretty advanced in this world. You don't think you, if you have two devices and apart from each other and you talk to it the other device mm -hmm. will be able to hear what you're saying but why would a music player and a communicator ever be in the same thing that sounds weird <laughs> <laughs> hmm. First, there are there are sending stones actually like as a D, &D item but uh, you think they would just come sure by one else. thing <laughs> Just, you know, for ease of use. Um, after this whole performance and like really peps him up, but he spends a little bit more time afterward taking up the mirror and like just looking at himself to just kind of like soothing himself and putting his whole back to rights and feeling a bit better. And he feels really quite good after this rest and this moment too, you know, and takes off of himself and get back to his strengths. It's quite a beautiful moment. You've been trapped in some dangerous circumstances and in a you know kind of scary tomb but this is just a really nice moment where you guys are maybe feeling a little bit more like kids having fun drawing together having a picnic singing and you know it's, it's the sun's you know not too hot because of the canopy but it's swell and Zip especially, it's it's feeling a little bit more like home. Nice. And is Boreal is looking with her mirror and over her shoulder she sees up in the trees there's a cat looking at them. Like a jaguar. I don't very calmly say 
there is a very large cat that seems to be looking on us. And then I kind of angle the mirror to show whoever is closest, which looks like Bug, uh, at the moment. Does it look, uh, like a danger? Are they dangerous in this world? Uh, as dangerous as they would be in the real world. Mm, okay. I'm like, okay, so how close is this? That's it's probably about 20 feet away. And then another, like, 8 feet in the air. Okay. Is it stalking us? Does it look like it's gonna, like, pounce? It's looking at you quite intently. And okay. its body, yeah, it does have sort of a ready-to-move stance. It's not, mm-hmm. like, lying there lackadaisically. I'll, um... Finish my fruit and like throw it into the bushes behind me, and then just like put a hand on the hilt of my my weapon. I just think in case. I can attempt to put it to sleep. Uh, I say as I put down the mirror casually and pick up the instrument and start to play a little, just like a not yet actually a spell, but okay. but if it doesn't work, then maybe. You should all attempt to attack it at that point. All right, so roll me some hit dice for that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to, before I start casting spell, I'm going to see if they're ready for that or agree to that. I'm going to get up, pretend to stretch, just like, uh, you know, like kind of play the part and then lift the warhammer up and like put it over my shoulder and say, yeah, "Yeah, I I think I'm ready. I'm going to hey. do the same. I'm going to very slowly get up and, and uh, draw out my sword like I'm kind of inspecting it. It starts uh, shifting its weight around, too. Can I see it without, like, making, like, looking directly at it? Um, can I do, give like, me a, a performance s- check. <laughs> like, do one of those, like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <a> sneaky peek. <laughs> performance? Sure, or deception. Oh, okay. Whichever both you plus zero. Uh, an eight. An eight. You sort of do the, you know, nonchalant looking, and it, you're looking right dead into its eyes. Mm. And you just sort of keep moving your head. <laughs> did it look, did it, does it look like a cat? Like, is it, cause I, know, I know we're going to a tabaxi village, so I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it? It does not look like a humanoid cat. It looks like a, a jungle cat. Before, Is it like a kind a... of cat that you've seen before? From your jungle? Yeah. Um, you guys can do nature checks. Uh, that was a really poor roll, and I rolled a 14. 14? Mm-hmm. As nature? You're like, yeah, that's a, that's a jaguar. Um, can I scan... The vicinity to see if I notice any others. Sure, give me a perception check. Oh my god, I'm rolling so terribly. <laughs> uh, six. It's a six. lone predator. Is it? Um, do I? Do I have any pieces of meat or bones from my lunch? Um, you would. You might have some <laughs> old uh, bones from Boxy. And you guys would have your dried spiced meat that you would have as like sort of jerky. That's the sort of the ration that you might have if you have meat in your rations. Okay. I um, slowly reach for a bone, a dried bone, I guess. You ask Boxy for one? Yeah. Wait, so I don't have any for from lunch. Right. If lunch no, okay. was like he popped up like i said it was all fruit all fruit okay <laughs> yeah he wouldn't let you put the dried meat in there because he didn't like it he was like it was, it was the smoked meat he didn't he didn't end up taking oh, see, any I after see. he tra- tasted it. he's like oh, i don't oh, like right, this right 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 yeah okay so hold on okay i just i just want to clarify something really quick is uh boxy giving us this fruit like he's kind of like like a mama bird just kind of like regurgitating it for us <laughs> <laughs> it's not like digest. No. <laughs> no, okay. It doesn't have any boxy fluid on there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's 
things I was not expecting to think about today. <laughs> yeah, is it kind of like a partially digested, <laughs> but it's not okay. Moving on, uh, giant cat. Okay, yeah, um, I reach for a, a dry jerky. I said, Boxy, ask me a piece of dry jerky. Whoop, a uh, piece of dried jerky comes to the top of the box. Okay. I just hold on to it to prepare okay. my stance. Um, I'm going to assume that spell didn't hit it. Oh, or didn't. It, it didn't roll. I didn't hear a number. 14. 14? Very poor. It just falls asleep in the tree. <laughs> and it's, you know, falls a little bit as it uh, sort of half awake and just falls back mm -hmm. asleep, like because it, like it hit its head as it fell, mm -hmm. because it like it, but it's like the magic is strong enough that it didn't wake it up, so it's now like lazing in the tree asleep. That was a good roll. Wow. It had wow. Thirteen hit points. Oh shit! Jeez. <laughs> okay. right, we should make a move. Um, that thing wakes we should up. Very quietly, yeah. Get out of here. Um. Yeah. So Shouldn't we uh, bury it or tie it up or something? So it doesn't follow us? I'm sure I can smell it sometimes. I, mean, I think you know, as with your sleep spell, that if you start messing around with a sleeping thing, if you damage it, you can wake it up. Yeah. Well, it's also I mean, to shake or slap the sleeper awake. It lasts for a minute. Yeah. One minute? Maybe just long, yeah, it's maybe just long enough to tie it up, but. Um, but Boxy makes guess. some rope appear. Yeah. Because. Esporiel is knowing that there's not very much time. <laughs> this is going to All be right, like, let's be quick there's then. only a minute. We can tie it up faster than we can run from it. So. Okay. All right. If you guys want so, to tie it up, who's going to try and tie? I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right. Um, so would that be stealth or sleight of hand? <laughs> or athletics? I will let you tell me how you're doing it. Why would you be able to do it? Like, I know if you know somebody said they were a sailor. You know, I might give them advantage or something, but I, uh, you know, and you pick what a skill you'd like to use. I mean, you could do well, a straight dex check. You could use. I don't know. Um. Uh, he would probably, extra slot of hands probably the closest to it sure. because um, just generally dexterous hands, and he's trying not to wake the jaguar, so I'm not doing gonna, this as carefully. I'm on board with that. I want to help. Can I help? Okay. If you're going to assist, you can either both roll, or uh, one of you can roll with advantage. Okay. Do you just Wait, want to tie it up, or do you want to like tie it to a tree or something? Like, it's in the tree. You could tie it to the tree that it's in. Like, it's got oh, enough, that'd be great. Bran enough branches yeah. around it that you could just tie it up to what it's currently attached to. That would, that would probably be ideal. Mm. To just well, attach it to the to the branch. If we both roll, what do we, like? What do I roll? Sleight of hand or something? Yep. I'm very good at tying knots. This is true. <laughs> um, okay. So I mean, he gets proficiency. Oh yeah, that's it. right. You have your yeah. Your background is you like tying knots. I, I about yeah. That. I would give you I a just... proficiency. You'd have a bonus plus two on top of your sleight of hand. Okay. Well, like, I... this is just like tying a really good shoelace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except you don't want it to untie. Uh, oof, well, I rolled an 18, so it's a dirty 20. Nice. Wow. That's I really mean, good. I only got a 9 plus 2, so 11. Okay. Well, we'll go with the higher number, as uh, we do. And uh, for some reason, my, when I'm drawing with this, it's just not connecting half the time. Oh no. It's drawing me little dots. Seems okay on this end. I have to go slower, yes. maybe. I'm going too fast. I did have like a, a connection issue with it earlier. Oh. Um, so, yeah, within 30 20, you are able to, with Bug's help, pretzel this sleeping jaguar into the tree. As a, and wrap it up like it's a, a present to be discovered later by the Chimera. 
or some other animal that maybe the bugs, maybe Douglas will appreciate this <laughs> later. Oh no, that's so sad. Yeah, it would be kind of to just put it out of its misery. It's going to be no. terrified for like however long it's in this tree by itself. That's 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 kind of. I'm gonna uh, make the knot a little bit loose. So I can... <laughs> do, do I notice this? Yes, because okay. you got the higher roll, so I can kind of say that you would notice it. I sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> I I see that he's doing this, and then if he starts once he starts to move away, I'm just gonna be like. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna and, leave. Um, sorry, go on. I was gonna say I'm gonna leave the beef jerky next to him. Okay. For later. Um, I having once having tied him up, I just kind of relax and say, "Well, it does have a very nice fur." I do not object to killing it while it is asleep. Since it's merciful, but also uh, I mostly just wanted to, to do this really fast so that they would have less chance to come after us. Yeah, it starts. Uh, it, it starts to wake up now. Let's it's, let's just leave. We don't have time. Like, ah, ah, ah. He can <laughs> eat the jerky while we leave. It like knocks the jerky to the side. It does not seem interested <laughs> oh, in the jerky, hey, hey, and buddy, it is come, now come freaking down. out, trying to um, get out of the tree. I. Let's just go. Alright, let's just go. No, I, I, this is, we shouldn't leave it up here. This is mean, this is cruel. This is survival. Pardon? Yeah. It's, it's survival. Okay. Yeah. I mean, killing it is also kind of mean, you know? It is, but it's not... It's, Less suffering is involved. But he might be able to get free. Does it look angry? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like kissing and spitting and swiping as much as it can. At this stage, I think it's it's a matter of us or it. And right now, I think in the interest of staying alive, we should just cheese it. Uh, we should... Does that this mean... is a very interesting slang, so let us cheese it, as you say. And I'm going to very quickly start walking away from it. How high up in the tree is it? Eight feet. Eight feet? Yeah. How do, how do we get up there in one minute and tie it up? <laughs> uh, get down. Well, you're getting boosts. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's get out of here. Um Let's get out of here. I'm, I'll follow you. happily. Yeah, I'll happily go along with that. <laughs> that's the that's the <laughs> <one. laughs> <laughs> wire says. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I'll say a quick prayer. Ma it. Like maybe the um the people from the village will free it. The the cat agrees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's gonna last that long up there by itself. <laughs> Did we pass by Douglas? <laughs> I'll I'll at least put like a a minor illusion of a um like a kind of one of those plants that live in a tree like a liana that's just like flowers, so it's hidden inside of it. <laughs> have hopefully more undisturbed time to get free or wiggle loose or whatever. I don't think that spell lasts for very long, but all right. No, it doesn't. <laughs> can I? Can I just do some non-lethal damage to it? Is it you want to try and knock it out? Yeah. All right, it's tied up, so I'm gonna say that. Yeah, if you want to just you're smashing it. What part of the body are you smashing? The noggin. All right. So uh, you know, it's like a kid's cartoon where, you know, there's no blood or anything because it's all internal bleeding, mm, but you yeah. smash <laughs> it really hard in the head until it passes out. I just, <laughs> no. and then I'll, right. I'll take the ropes off it. Oh, okay. If, 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 it, if it's, if it's, if it's actually knocked out, 
I'll, um, and still breathing. It's got labored breathing, but it's breathing. Okay. Uh, then I'll, I'll take <laughs> the ropes it, off it and say, Is okay. it dying? No, no, no. Just, I just, no. I just knocked it out. I just knocked it out. I, mm -hmm. I didn't. This way, this way, it has a fighting chance. Where if it was just tied to a tree, something would come along and just eat it. But now, uh, now, All right. I, I don't know. I don't know. We should go. It, we should go before it wakes up again, though, because I got the yeah. ropes. So, uh, yeah, let's um, let's go. Okay, let's go. Explained. Right. I mean, mind you, it wanted to eat us, but I'm saying this is walking away. Do want do want to, you know. You know, treat treat things the way you want to be treated and all that. Like, would you like to be tied up and left in a tree? Or would you rather be knocked out and left in a tree so you could wake up later? Neither. You know, this being tied up sounds more fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, 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 if, you, if you can see a person with blue skin blush, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> He just kind of looks forward and starts walking away. All right. So I guess you probably turned purple. The, <laughs> the, the blood, you know, flushing with the blue. <laughs> um, all right. You guys continue for a while. And uh, I need another perception check from uh, Zip in the front. 19. This time you spot the flame flowers and mm -hmm. you do not walk into them. You're getting close to like, you know, you probably would have brushed your other leg up against one, but you're like, ah, ah, not going to fool me twice, you think. <laughs> and uh, you're able to avoid it. Do, are you going to point it out to the rest of the group? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how spiteful you were feeling at the moment. So uh, you point it out to everybody else and they avoid it. And as soon enough, you guys, uh, you know, it's the sun is starting to set. The sky is starting to turn pink and uh, you break out of this sort of, you know, deer trail, this, you know, something that animals have been walking along. They had to hack your way through back onto a proper path that is heading west. And it's still within the dark canopy of the jungle. Uh, but you are now able to travel at a much faster speed and uh, possibly without as much danger as when you were bushwhacking. Okay. And uh, the sun is going down. You guys are nearing uh, sort of your eight hours of travel, but you guys can you travel for another hour and you, the sun is really starting to go down. Like the sun is basically gone, but you're on a path that is fairly safe. You guys could, if you haven't encountered anything unusual, you've heard bird calls and there have been lots of butterflies that you saw during the day and you've seen, you know, lizards and things. There's things alive in this jungle, but nothing that has seemed predatorial towards you. Um, so the question is, after eight hours, do you want to try and make camp or do you want to push on with the possibility that you become exhausted I think we should make camp. Yeah. But we, um, the idea was that we could make it to the the town within a day if we went fast, right? Right, so but we, we weren't going fast. We didn't know it. But we did half a day fast. So if we keep walking into the night, we could make it there and rest yes, in, but... in town. Well, but that was a day or a day and a half by Minotaur standards. Right. Or were yeah, they guessing yeah. for you? No. You don't know. Well, I think so, I think we're nearly there. So we don't know how far, how much farther is. No. I don't know if any guess? of you have any spells that might help with that, but I don't think you do. But well, we can't see the the city not, from the distance. You cannot viciously yeah. mock the the intervening <laughs> space, unfortunately. <laughs> how do you know that we're nearly there? What did your god tell you? No, but do you really want to camp out here with things like I that? I really don't want to be crashing through the jungle in the middle of the night. The, um, so the jungle is like not a straight path. It's kind of like winding. 
Is that how it is? Like, we can't it's, see. Yeah, it's meandering lines. a bit, and it's also pretty dark now. Like, also, if you're going to travel, you're going to have to bring out a light source of some sort. Well, I think three of us had dark vision, but I uh, okay. well doesn't. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm blind in, in, at night. <laughs> I can't imagine why you want to travel at night. Yeah. I don't what want to spend uh, the night out here. What does uh, being exhausted entail? Do we just pass out? So if you get gain one level of exhaustion, that means that you make saving throws and skill checks at disadvantage. If you gain a second level, then you uh, also have penalties or disadvantage on attack rolls. And then you start adding them up until you get to level six in which you're just dead. So like oh. it's the type of thing that you would be dealing with if you were traveling through a desert and you had no water. Okay. Um, or like in the middle of a volcano or something. Yeah. Well, we, we kind of took a break earlier today. We took multiple breaks. So maybe we should keep going. Did you guys I don't know take about a nap? you guys, but like, I don't really want to spend the night in a town full of ghosts. Well, the spell is spending a night in, a, in the jungle, but. Oh, yeah, do, I don't we, think... do we anticipate the town being dangerous, actually? Yeah, we don't know what, what sort of reception we will get at the town. So, right. whether it's safe or not. The, yeah. To refresh your memory from last week, the uh, head Minotaur, the elder Minotaur, had told you that. Phantom Wall, the people are there have been, uh, they don't go out much except for one of them, and that one person had visited them a few times and was fairly friendly, and ghosts protect the city. Uh, mm. Is that where the bookworm right. came from? No. Nope. Okay. You haven't asked about the bookworm, really. I mean, you, you know that the bookworm oh. collects books, but you don't know where the bookworm is from. Right. So the ghosts are friendly, or not friendly to danger, but we're not dangerous. Well, we don't know that they might just be unfriendly to outside also to send me out. If we are like, we're not dangerous. We're children. <laughs> All right, once, well. but... Okay. You know what? Fine. Let's travel through the night. Why not? We just went over, why not? Just, why not? Just... We'll get there faster, and then we'll get to leave faster. Do you remember what happened when they said that we'll travel faster and uh, get there faster, and then nothing of the sort actually happened? That was today. Hmm. <laughs> if, we, if we camp, we're going to have to, I don't know, set a fire and a watch and... I don't know what's going to be But we'd also get sleep. That's true. I'm not sleepy yet. Perhaps we can find... I mean, how close are the two is? Perhaps we may sleep in the winters. At least get us off the ground. And then set to watch. Uh, a shit, a rotation. Should get enough for us to all get at least six hours of sleep. No, I... I, don't, I, don't, I know you... You lot don't need one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna set a fire because I can't see otherwise, and I know setting a fire might keep some of the predators away. Oh, it might floss them too. All right, so we're setting camp then. It's yeah. up to you. I mean, sure, why not? Okay, all right. Well, if you guys all want to set camp, then let's set camp. Um, I think I would like to find a place, like a hidden area, either in like the roots of a tree or up in a tree, someplace to essentially, yeah, just hide it. Great. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that Boxy opens up and Boxy has hammocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second thing is give me uh, whoever's looking for it an investigation check to find a good place to rest. Who actually has a good investigation on this? Um, because I don't. I only have a plus two. I don't. Nope. I have plus zero. Negative one. <laughs> you have one. the best investigation of all. We are a bunch of <laughs> dumb dumbs. 
All right. My wisdom's super wants. high, but my intelligence is not. <laughs> I have smart, not book smart. Um, oh. High deception. Yeah. Someone want to help me? I'll look with you. You do you want to just take the advantage? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, or do you want to make your own roll? No, no, way, you, you do okay. it. Okay. Natural 20. Oh, beautiful. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you find... It, you and a know, three on the other one, so the advantage is really good. You start walking through the jungle, and you're like, okay, I'm going to find something very close to the edge. And uh, Zip says, well, let's try that side. And you look around, and you're like, oh. And you spot, like, the perfect spot on the other side. And you rush over, and you, like, start setting up the hammocks, and you get them up really nice and high off of the the floor and you find like a good spot for um swell to set up a fire pit there's like mm -hmm. a, a dry spot where you can dig up and put stones around yeah and, like oh, yeah. these nice stones that are sort of the right size to try and cover it up a little so it doesn't go too far and, yeah. yeah i'll use the hand axe that's got the shovel on the end to dig it out and set it up and then use the other end to cut up some firewood to set it going all right you find some dead trees that are dry enough that you can use them as wood. Excellent. And uh, you guys set up a camp. What is the sleeping arrangement here? Like, who's going to sleep? Who's waking up? You know, like, elves usually don't only need to sleep for four hours, usually. So... Does that count for drow, though? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll sleep first, and then I'll take the, the like, morning watch. Well, I can I can stay up now while the fire's still burning, because then you won't you won't need you won't need it when you're up, because you can see in darkness fine. I can. I'll take a second watch then, because I don't need much sleep either. So it being interrupted won't do me that much harm. So uh, when, between is Bug gonna take a watch, or are we gonna do it between the three? I'm trying to think of it. You can you can wake me up, more. I guess after your watch or who i don't know you guys shouldn't need to have uh you should only need to have three watches because oh okay um with zip being able to take four hours ever and wait i don't know he's boreal's an elf as well right mm -hmm. half oh elf. half elf right okay does that mean that you also only need four hours um uh Technically, actually, I think it sleeps the same as a human. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay, then I guess I'll just go to sleep for all, the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, like, sleepy, but actually, then I fell asleep immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Before you finish speaking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you... Bug is like, yeah, I'm not sleeping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's boreal and uh, Zip, I don't know, Zip's maybe listening to music or whatever. I don't know what you're doing. You guys fade off and Swell is there in the night. And you're hearing, you know, some familiar sounds and some unfamiliar sounds. And then flying around towards your fire, you see this, basically it looks like a, a moth that's this big, but it's got pincers on the end of it. Oh. And it's flying around and it like goes into the fire and it like burns up and ah, sort of dies. Nice. Okay. And then another couple show up and they're flying around and they start going around and darting around and looking in the dark and one of them comes towards you. I'm gonna stay still. But put my hand around my my it arm. It lands on you and it starts biting into you, but it bites into the chain mail. Okay. But you can feel it's got a really tight, tight pincer like grip. And then it lets go. Are you moving or reacting to it at all? Can I um bring a hand up like real slowly? And like uh try and grab it? Sure, give me an attack roll. Uh, unarmed strike, I'm guessing. Yeah. It's 
Okay, it's not too bad. Um, oh, sorry, 16, I believe. Yeah, 16 to hit. All right, you managed to grab a hold of it, and it's like wriggling in your hands. Can I just like hit it on the tree that I'm, I'm next to and like kill it? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. You squash it into the tree and it's dead. But you see, like, another one is like landed on top of Bug. It bites Bug. Bug takes one point of damage and wakes up. Oh, wait, what? Like, there's an intense pain in the side of your ribs. And you wake up and you look down and you see that there's this, like, moth like creature with big pincers biting into your rib cage. How far off the ground are we? I mean, it's up to you guys. Okay. But they're flying around, so. If I could, if I could have got over there, I would have grabbed that one too. If I could. But, but they're they're they've spread out, like, oh. and so you you got yours. That was your uh, your round to do something, but it's also attacking. They're attacking the rest of your group. Okay. It bit my side. It bit your side, yeah. Oh. Um, but it's right next to me. I can squish it. Yeah, uh, you can roll the hit if you want to. Okay, I will roll to unarmor strike. I got eleven. Eleven. It like flies away when you try to grab it. Oh no. Okay. And one lands on zip and bite zip. For two points of damage and zip wakes up. Yeah. There's like a sharp pain. In your leg, the one, not, one that's not been bit or not not been flame tongued or flame flowered. I'm gonna swat it away. All right, roll the hit. Sixteen. Sixteen. You grab one and smash it. Um, have I seen these kind of things before? Uh, give me a check. Nature or survival. Eight. Wait, did I take damage? You took one point of damage, yes. Oh, one point. Eight. Eight. No, you don't know what these are. Ugh. Do I know of any um, sort of bug natural bug repellents that might work for something like this? Give me another survival check. Okay. I feel like I started one of you with bug repellent. Swell, does that sound familiar? Um, oh, it might be, uh... I got a 12 for that. 12? You do know of some things, but, uh, like, it would take you some time to find the ingredients and put it together. You don't have... It's not like, oh yeah, that tree over there, if I just wave it around. Are they being attracted by the fire? Could be. I'm going to tell Zip to put the fire out. Tell Zip to put the fire out? Sorry, tell... <laughs> <Swell. laughs> tell yourself. <laughs> I'm going to say, Swell, put the damn fire out. They're coming for it. If I put it out, I can't see anything. That's your own damn fault for being That's another dark attack blind. on Swell for another two points of damage. Okay. This one lands on your back and bites into your neck. I'll light my, um, what was it, my fairy fire? Hang on. What's it called again? Fairy fire is a drow spell that you get innately, I believe. Uh, that create, that yeah. highlights all of the things in the area. Sorry, what was that, Eastboreal? Oh, do you get it already, though? Yeah, I'm not sure you get it at first level. There's You get something at first level, but I'm not sure. Oh, Dancing Lights. That's the one. Okay. I'll light up my Dancing Lights so that Swell can see without his fire. Okay. Uh, the bugs get distracted and start flying around these uh, Dancing Lights instead of oh. you guys. Okay, that's good. <laughs> no, you gave me sunscreen. Okay. But it's possible I gave Zip some bug repellent. I feel like I gave it to one of you. I don't have it listed. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so the bugs seem now currently distracted by the lights. Um, if I go to sleep, I'm assuming that my dancing lights are going to disappear, though. That's right. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll stay up then. I'll kick the fire out. Put dirt over it. Say, so, listen, you may as well just sleep. I'll stay up. Fine. <laughs> Did any action land on me? On Isburia? Uh One landed on you, sleeping? but didn't bite into you because it got distracted by the dancing lights. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he sleeps on undisturbed, completely oblivious. So the you can keep the dancing lights up for a while, but eventually you're going to need to sleep or do something about them. What's your plan? How many bugs um, are there? How many are there? Say a dozen. Can I just try and smash them all? Um, how are you going to smash them? My hands, like. <laughs> um, they're pretty big. They're like the size of your hands. You might be better off with your sword or something. But okay, maybe. Uh, sure, I'll do it with my sword. I'll like. I'll like using the dancing lights. I'll like lead them away from where everyone's sleeping. Okay. Just a little bit, so that I'm not like swinging my sword around. <laughs> and accidentally cutting the hammock down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll um, I'll I'll squish it. I'll squish them. All right, I think that's a pretty solid plan, so I'm not going to make you roll for it. I'm going to okay. say that you squish all of the bugs. Okay. Because uh, you can basically lead them around with the lights, get them to go where you want. Yeah. And eventually they're all dead. All right. Well, once oh. that's done, I'll go back to my hammock. I'm assuming that Swell is, has retired by that stage. probably still putting the fire out, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, like, it doesn't take you that long, and you're making noises like, ah, ugh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, so it's not like he's like, <sighs> <laughs> this is also first watch, right? So right. this is, you know, he's not as tired as he might be if it was later in the night. Right. Um, but, okay, so once I come back, I'll just say, listen, I'll just take the first watch. You don't need to sit here in the dark. I'll go to sleep once East Burial wakes up. All right. I'll um, go into my hammock and uh, lay down and uh, draw for a little bit and then fall asleep. You guys succeed in getting a long rest. So you gain the benefits of a long rest on your D&D &D Beyond character sheets. Nice. And, and contrary to what you would have expected from what you've seen of Half Elves before, Isburil wakes up after like four hours instead of six. Hmm. And you kind of hear him stir and then he gets up and goes about his day and looks over, uh, lies back down. <laughs> Wait, aren't you going to relieve me? <laughs> and it says, it realizes that you've seen him and says, uh, well, my turn, is it? Yeah. Okay. Don't try and get out of this. <laughs> this is all part of, you know, crashing through the jungle. This is what you're going to get used to. This is why the jungle is terrible. But he does kind of grumpily sit up and sort of put away his stuff and start walking, like find, finds a spot that he can wash from. Okay. Bugs cocooned himself. So. <laughs> he sleeps like this for the rest of the night. <laughs> they can't get bit except for on the face. At first he was like this. <laughs> now His brother does also say, oh, seems like it was completely quiet, huh? <laughs> Nothing at all seemed to happen. <laughs> um, I actually thought that that's how you were supposed to use uh, hammocks, is that you're meant to like kind of cocoon yourself in them so you don't get eaten by bugs. Now it will be how I use hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> I think, isn't it that you're actually supposed to like lie sort of crosswise across them? Um, uh, so that it actually like supports your body the same way, the entire way, instead of like... Oh. Uh, well, if they, they're sort of shaped like, uh, if they're shaped like this, usually, like a lot of times they'll have like these supports on the sides mm -hmm. to make it harder to wrap up. 
I don't know if that's just the ones in gardens and stuff rather than the oh. ones you get on a ship. Mm, right. But I don't know about lying. Usually not, they're not dimensioned to uh, go the other way. Mm. I don't know. I have no idea how they work. Oh. But... Apparently, apparently you are supposed to lie crosswise across them because there's like enough material oh, and yeah. you just like kind of push it out. Huh. But um, yeah. Interesting. Hammock knowledge. If there are any <laughs> hammock experts out there watching right now, <laughs> please let us know. Um, so you guys wake up the next morning. You have your long, found your long rest. You take a moment to, uh, you know, it's still quiet and dark in the jungle. It's a little, like the sun just starting to come up. And uh, you guys are going to resume your uh, trail, I assume. And yeah. after two hours, you're still within this dark canopy. And it, it gets darker and a little bit cold. <coughs> you feel chilly. And up ahead, you see there are some lights in the darkness. And you're able to see like the shimmering forms, iridescent glowing forms of tabaxi and that's where we're going to leave tabaxi? it for the, tonight tabaxi oh whoa this is a nice piece wait oh and they're very they're very fabulous <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so cool wait tabaxi are um bear people or uh yeah, there's these ones are like jaguar people Jaguar people, okay. Mm. I could, they look like cute bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they definitely have sort of a bear shape to them. The way I like drawn it. Their heads. It's a, I like the drawing. They're all neon, too. I like mm. it. I was trying to so, make it sort of iridescent. Like, they, they shimmer like uh, sort of fabric, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. And are they all like, looking at us from the woods? They're with all their looking eyes? at you with these glowing oh. red eyes. Are they also brandishing their weapons? They're all holding like their that? weapons. One starts off on that, uh, like they're all hovering above these stumps, and one slowly makes its way across mm. into the center and holds its sword like that. And you'll find out what happens next week. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yay. Um, <laughs> that's so cool. Survive. That's red. <laughs> With actually very minimal, relatively minimal. <laughs> Damage. <laughs> we uh, managed to avoid fighting anything, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, anybody have a favorite moment from tonight? I liked uh, when the chimera was chowing down on me. <laughs> 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 Someone's a masochist. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> uh, I like the beetles are like human shaped i guess i know they're not intended to be human shaped but you like douglas <laughs> douglas yeah it's like an old friend that you pass by but you don't want to talk to him so we like made a you like oh uh, yeah <laughs> he's kind of weird we have we have a comment from the chat that says uh you and me likes the group's dilemma over the jaguar in the tree oh. uh, Nice. All right. Oh, that's good. I, I, I did appreciate actually making that roll <laughs> so that it, <laughs> it actually fell asleep. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, I was like, okay, well, this thing doesn't have enough hit points to maybe survive. This is, you got to actually have a chance at this. This is a good way to get out of it. <laughs> I actually prefer when you guys find ways to avoid combat. And I'm trying to give you guys, like, you guys, are, I want you to feel overwhelmed because your kid's out of your depths. But you guys have proved that you've got the wits about you to uh, to survive even in dangerous circumstances. I like that. Yeah, was very. I was definitely feeling overwhelmed. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Zip has an advantage though, because she's from the jungle. It's like she's she's not getting as rattled. Uh, also, it sounds like your mentor is just the kind of dude who just tosses her in the middle of the jungle, and this is basically the same thing as normal. <laughs> this is yeah. normal. <laughs> yeah. That's his like training method. Is that he'd just like kind of kidnap, kidnap me in the middle of the night, 
and take me out into the middle of the jungle and then be like, find your way home. Wow. Is that why you're the way you are? Kind of, yeah. Dark <laughs> <laughs> well, comes clean. Sorry, go ahead. No. no. So I think like Swell's been to like all these jungle islands, but he's never actually been into the interior. It's usually around the coastal side of things. So hmm. There's no he's... waves in the mountains? No, there is not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's, he's he's a little bit freaked out, I think, mm. um, by all by all of it. He tends to be on the coast. Mm. Get him near water, and he's fine. But put him in the <laughs> middle of a jungle, and he's out of his out of his element. <laughs> so there's lots of water around, though. It's just you know coming from the sky. Yeah. But... <sighs> um, That's good. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have uh, anything they want to say in their outros? We should do the outros. Say goodbye to everybody. Um, let's do reverse order from what we did last time. So, Priscilla. Um, oh, I have a hat cat again, too. Uh, I'm Priscilla. I typically do t tabletop, RPG, fantasy art, and book covers and stuff. Um, I actually normally do a stream after the this stream at 7 p.m. or so. Well, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But tonight I am skipping it. But normally I would be there. And yeah. So um, I think that was Boya next. Okay. Yeah. I. My name is Boya. Thank you for watching. Um, I recently I've been posting some of the toy sculptures that I've been making on Instagram. That's so you can find cute. them. Thank you. Yeah. You can find them at Boya underscore sun. That's my Instagram. Um, who's next? Kaylin? Is that yeah. you? Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Kaylin. I don't have anything in particular to plug right now. I'm, I'm mostly just drawing um, fan art for a magical marker. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. If you really haven't checked, uh, <laughs> the comics, actually, I really like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They've been super good. It feels like a manga that you're drawing, like just yeah. little sections from. Yeah. yeah. I, actually, I don't know if you can see the shirt that I'm wearing right now. It's from like Ranma. So oh, really? nice. very inspired by like shoujo kind of mm -hmm. uh, manga. <laughs> cool. And uh, yeah, I was last, I guess. Um, my name's Matt. Um, yeah, you can find me at MK Hottie on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I had a book came out that came out recently called um, How I Survived uh, Four Nights on the Ice. It's about a uh, written by an Inuit elder um, and how he got trapped on the sea ice in the middle of winter and how he survived there. Um, it's kind of insane um, that it happened, but uh, yeah, all his knowledge that he had uh, helped him get through it all. Um, I think you can find so you, that. Sorry, you did the illustrations for that yeah, in the it, comic. It, exactly. Yeah, um, it, I think it came out a little while ago, but it's starting to get a little bit of press now. So um, yeah, I think you can find it in most bookstores as well, which is pretty cool, and um, or online at I think in inhabitmedia.com. You can buy it online there. Uh, but yeah, check it out. You should have a uh, show us the picture of the cover next week. I don't actually have a copy of it yet, um, but I can post it um, in the. You, you drew the cover, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have it digitally, but I can't oh, yeah. hold it up and be like, "Hey, guys!" <laughs> yeah. So show us the digital uh, thing next week. All right. I want everybody to see what you're doing. Okay. Nice. Um, and I, I'm gonna this week. I'm gonna plug my shirts. If you like skeletons eating pizzas and. Uh, beholders that are also uh, mimics treasure chests and <laughs> things like that uh, I have a threadless at brianmcl.threadless.com so if you want some cool nerdy shirts that nobody else has go check them out uh, awesome. thank you for uh, joining us tonight or whenever you're joining us if you're watching us on demand uh, and uh you know, spread the good word and come back again next week. Uh, may you draw out your adventures uh, for two hours. Uh, still, still tagline. We'll get, we'll find one eventually. We did actually just get together and brainstorm a bunch to rotate through. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. Right. Thank good, you. Night. good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.